Many people who suffer from fatigue and low energy ask themselves if they might have chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, or maybe even both. In this video, I want to discuss the similarities and differences between both and help you understand each condition better. We will also talk about their symptoms and how to heal from them, which is what you ultimately want, right? Let's start off with chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis or MECFS. It's a complex condition and depending on which source you listen to, you will get a different definition. Usually something along the lines of a serious long-term illness that results in chronic fatigue, obviously, and that doesn't get better no matter how much rest you get. CFS can really affect anyone, including children, but it tends to be more common among women. And most patients get their first symptoms or crash in their 20s to 40s. In 2015, the Institute of Medicine established a diagnosis guideline which states that the following three symptoms plus one of the additional symptoms need to be present for CFS to be diagnosed. They are 1. Fatigue, so a patient who experiences a noticeable decrease in their ability to engage in activities they would have enjoyed before the onset of their illness. 2. Post-exertional malaise, meaning the patient experiences a worsening of symptoms after exposure to physical or cognitive stressors. And three, unrefreshing sleep. So the patient feeling tired even after a night's sleep. On top of that, one of the following symptoms should also be present. Either cognitive impairment, so problems with the thought or executive function, which also get worse after exertion or stress. Or two, orthostatic intolerance. This refers to the worsening of symptoms when you try to maintain an upright posture. It can apply especially to very severe cases that are bed-bound for days, months, or even longer. If you want to be really pedantic, the symptoms need to be present for at least six months. But of course, all of this is theory. In practice, chronic fatigue syndrome is very controversial and there is a lot of confusion about the illness and its diagnosis. Even though the current medical consensus is that there is no known cause, it has been classified as a neurological disorder by the World Health Organization. Again, symptoms can be very complex and affect many parts of the body, including the brain and muscles, GI tract, and immune system. You often end up with a weird mix of things like insomnia, muscle weakness, a lowered immune response, depression, anxiety, and many other symptoms. I talk about how to see through all the confusing studies on CFS in a different video. Next, let's talk about adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is a condition you will pretty much only find among holistic practitioners, because unlike CFS, it isn't an accepted medical condition. So it's even more controversial than CFS. The term adrenal fatigue has been used since around the 1990s, but really only caught traction in the early 2000s. So it's a fairly new concept. The adrenals are walnut-sized disc-shaped glands and you have one atop each kidney. They are important because they secrete hormones that help your body deal with stress. For example, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, aldosterone, and also small amounts of sex hormones, for example, estrogen and testosterone. The most important hormones for your stress response are usually adrenaline and cortisol because they trigger the sympathetic nervous system which activates your fight-or-flight reflex. This in turn will increase your blood glucose, raise your blood pressure, and also stimulates energy production. The idea behind adrenal fatigue is that chronic overuse of the adrenals from too much stress, for example, leads them to burnout, which then impairs your ability to react to stress and lead a healthy life. For example, cortisol spikes under acute stress, but during constant stress, when the adrenals burn out, your cortisol levels will eventually plummet because your body no longer has the nutrients and energy to maintain healthy adrenal function. As for its diagnosis, there are several ways in which holistic practitioners will diagnose adrenal fatigue. Most use saliva, blood, or urine tests of stress hormones, for example, cortisol or adrenaline, and here very low levels or unnatural patterns throughout the day would be indicative of adrenal fatigue. I generally prefer a hair analysis of your electrolytes, but the reason behind that is discussed in a different video. Let's now talk about similarities and differences between chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue. First, the similarities. 
If we look at the illnesses themselves, both are very controversial conditions with a lot of disagreement on causes and treatment, which means most patients often run around seeing multiple practitioners, both traditional and holistic ones, and will hear many different explanations of what is wrong with them. In terms of symptoms, we already went over chronic fatigue syndrome symptoms, but when you research adrenal fatigue, you will often find very similar lists, including severe fatigue, body aches, brain fog and lightheadedness, mental health issues, and of course, a low stress tolerance. When it comes to the differences between the two, like I said before, CFS is an accepted medical condition, although it wasn't always, whereas adrenal fatigue is often said to be a myth. I have to disagree with that and talk about the validity of adrenal fatigue in a different video. Another difference is that CFS is seen as something that affects the entire body, whereas adrenal fatigue is specific to one organ in your body, which is underperforming. From my personal experience, I would also have to say that adrenal fatigue is not quite as bad as chronic fatigue syndrome. You can usually live a fairly normal, although stressful life with slightly underperforming adrenals. But if you have full-blown chronic fatigue syndrome, you have to put everything on hold and make this your priority number one. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to recover from it. Another way of putting it is that most CFS patients have some sort of adrenal problem because the adrenals are so critical for energy production, but not everyone with adrenal fatigue also has full-blown chronic fatigue syndrome. Great, now that we talked about the symptoms, similarities, and differences between the two conditions, what can you do to heal from them? What do you do if you feel like crap? My personal opinion is that it's definitely important to familiarize yourself with the basic terms and the different conditions that are linked to fatigue, but many people often get lost in the diagnostic differences when in reality they should basically be treated the same. If you look at the research on complicated conditions like CFS, adrenal fatigue, burnout, and even things like irritable bowel syndrome, you will quickly see that they all include a chronic stress factor. And this is not just emotional stress from a tight deadline, but also chemical stress in the form of toxins and physical stress from inflammation, for example. Over time, this chronic stress often comes with nutritional deficiencies, which are very underdiagnosed, by the way, and in severe cases, an acute traumatic experience. This pattern is very strong across many chronic conditions. And even though I don't want to downplay the differences between chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue, there is an argument to be made that we just kind of came up with a different name for the same condition. In fact, the role stress plays in diseases has been known for almost 100 years by now. In the 1940s, the father of stress research, Dr. Hans Selye, came up with something called the General Adaption Syndrome, which I quickly want to explain to show you what I mean. What he found was that all chronic stress patients go through the same three stages regardless of the source of stress. Stage 1, which is the alarm stage. Next comes stage 2, called resistance. And lastly, patients enter stage 3, exhaustion. Here's a graph where you can see what this looks like in practice. On the x-axis, you have time, and on the y-axis, you have your resistance to stress. Basically how it works is that when you first face stress of any type, this will trigger an alarm response in your body, so you enter stage 1. The initial exposure to the stressor often causes a type of shock, which is the dip in the graph. After the shock, your body turns on the fight-or-flight response that prepares you to either flee or protect yourself in a dangerous situation. Your heart rate increases, your adrenal glands release cortisol, and you receive a boost in adrenaline, which increases your energy. You then enter stage two, the resistance stage. If you overcome the stressor and the situation is no longer an issue, your body repairs itself until your hormone levels, heart rate, and blood pressure reach a pre-stress state. If, however, the stressful situation continues for an extended period of time, your body will remain on high alert and try to adapt to the new situation, meaning it will try to learn how to live with a higher stress level. In this stage, the body goes through changes that you're unaware of in an attempt to cope with stress. It continues to secrete stress hormones and your blood pressure often remains elevated. You may think you're managing the stress well, 
but your body's physical response tells a different story. If the resistance stage continues for too long without pauses to offset the effects of stress, this can lead to the exhaustion stage. As the name suggests, this third stage is where resistance to stress is lost and you collapse. It is the result of too much chronic stress. Your body has used up its physical, emotional and mental resources to the point where it no longer has strength to fight off stress. This is where burnout happens and where the crazy symptoms start to appear. Like I said in my video on the causes of chronic fatigue syndrome, it is often a traumatic experience that pushes people from stage 2 to stage 3. This last straw can really be anything from an infection to losing a loved one or exposure to a toxic substance. But it isn't the reason you're sick. All the stress you accumulated over the years finally reached a tipping point which pushed you into the exhaustion stage. Understanding the different stages of the general adaption syndrome really helped me put my chronic fatigue into perspective and help me forgive myself, since much of the stress accumulation happened unconsciously over years and years without me noticing. What all that means is that if you want to get better, it's usually best not to lose yourself in a specific diagnosis, but instead to focus on replenishing your physical, nutritional and mental resources that help you deal with stressors. When done right, this can fix both chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue. This might seem unusual if you're a beginner, since most of us are used to focusing on individual symptoms and try to cure them one by one. But in my experience, seeing these chronic conditions as whole body illnesses is the more effective approach. I talk about how to do that in my videos, the most important of which I will link in the description, and also in my recovery program if you want a step-by-step -step guide. Obviously, you always also want to work with a professional and get the medical or therapeutic treatment that you need. All I talk about is lifestyle advice and it's not a substitute for professional treatment. Great, now that we're at the end of this video, let me leave you with some motivational words. It is definitely possible to greatly improve your fatigue or even heal from it completely. I feel like this isn't said enough. Just because there is no medical consensus of what triggers chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue isn't even an accepted condition, that doesn't mean you cannot improve or heal from it. So just know that many people have done it before you and it is possible. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.